All right, welcome to day one of 2.4. We are going to continue our discussion on inequalities. The only difference now is we're going to deal with um, uh, quadratics, trinomials, so basically any type of polynomial. So we open up here with an example in which we've got our f of x. It's a trinomial. Uh, notice that I have it here graphed for us. We're going to use that to help us determine where it is greater than 0 or less than or equal to 0. And then it is also given in factored form. The reason why that's important is remember that if we talk about using that zero product property, which says that if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. Well, in our case, we're going to set them all equal to zero, and we're going to say that x equals negative four, which is over here on our graph that x is equal to a negative 1, which is also on our graph, and that x is equal to a positive 2, which is right here on our graph. So the very first thing that uh, they want us to determine is where is our function greater than 0? Or, in another way of looking at it, where is it above the x-axis? Well, notice that it is above the x-axis between our x values of negative 4 and negative 1. So I'm going to write this by saying, using interval notation, that it is greater than 0 when it is greater than negative 4 and less than negative 1. I'm using parentheses because this does not have an equal to, it just says greater than. But it is also greater than 0 when it is on the other side of 2, so therefore from 2 to infinity. All right, the second part. Where is it less than or equal to 0, or where is it below the x-axis? Well, notice that it is below the x-axis when we go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4. I'm going to use a bracket this time because of the equal to, all right? And then it is also uh, less than or equal to 0 or below the x-axis anytime it is between a negative 1 and a positive 2. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We will not always graph it. Sometimes what we will do is we'll just do it on a number line and determine, um, you know, whether it's positive or negative depending upon uh, if we want above zero or greater than uh, greater than zero or less than zero. All right, let's look at a, another example here. All right, so if we take a look at this one, um, if it helps, you can think about uh, graphing it. And one of the ways that I'm going to help in terms of graphing this is that I am going to factor this. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to be negative 18 that add to be negative 3 would be x minus 6 and x plus 3 are less than or equal to 0. So I know a couple of things. Number one, since I have a positive x squared, I have a u shape that is going up. Okay, I know that it is going to cross at a 6, and it is going to cross at a negative 3. So 1, 2, 3, here's my negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, here's my 6. Okay, I know that I have a parabola that is going up because of the positive x squared. Okay, the other exact points I don't necessarily need to know. I just need to know when it is less than or equal to 0, and it is less than or equal to 0, in between a negative 3 and 6. So therefore, I can say that, and remember that since it has an equal to, I'm going to use brackets, between negative 3 and 6, that it is less than or equal to 0. All right, so key points on this. Hopefully, you're starting to figure this out. We are looking for zeros or x-intercepts, okay? That's what we're looking for because that determines when our graph changes from a positive above the x-axis or greater than zero to a negative and vice versa, okay? All right, when we get to testing points, we're going to do that when we do that on a number line. All right, let's go ahead to page two. All right, so in this example, we're going to do this without uh, graphing, um, graphing in terms of on an xy graph. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like I did before. I am going to factor this. So two numbers that multiply to be negative 
24 and add to be negative 2 would be x minus 6, x plus 4, okay, and that is greater than or equal to 0. Now, interpret. Greater than or equal to 0 means that I want values that are positive. So on my number line, since x is equal to negative 4, I've got a negative 4, and x is equal to a 6 because of x equal to 6, I can test points. So that's what we had on the bottom of the other page. page. So I just need to test any number that is um, greater than 6. So let's just say I chose 10. X is equal to 10. If I plug that into our equation, that would mean 10 squared is 100, minus 2 times 10, which is 20, and then minus 24, okay? Well, that would be 100 minus 44, which is what, 56, which is greater than or equal to 0, which means any number greater than 6 is going to give me a positive result. If I choose a number between negative 4 and 6, an easy one to choose is 0. So if x is equal to 0, I would have 0 squared, which is 0, minus 2 times 0, which is 0, minus 24, giving me negative 24 is not greater than or equal to 0. Negative 24 is negative, okay? And then if I go back and I choose a number that is um, less than negative 4, say x is equal to, I'll go negative 10 this time. So negative 10 squared would give me a 100. Negative 2 times negative 10 would give me a positive 20, and then minus 24. This is 120 minus 24, or 96, which is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so that gives me positive results. So when is my um, polynomial greater than or equal to 0? Well, it looks like it's greater than or equal to 0 when it is uh, greater than or equal to 6 and less than or equal to negative 4. So therefore, I am going to write that it is, and because of the equal sign, I'm going to use brackets. So I'm going to go from negative infinity up to a negative 4 with a bracket, and then union, and then bracket 6 to infinity. Okay? If I wanted less than or equal to 0, I would have done in between the negative 4 and the 6. So a couple of things you have to interpret is what inequality uh, do you have. Okay, that determines do you want positive or negative. And then pay attention to that inequality on whether or not you need to use parentheses or brackets. All right, so stop the video and see if you can do example three. All right, now that you've had uh, some time to do this one, hopefully you got x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 3, and x is equal to a uh, 7. So therefore, on your number line, you got a negative 1, you've got a 3, you've got a 7. And then if you tested points, which hopefully you did, anything greater than 7 is negative, anything between 3 and 7 is positive. Anything between negative 1 and 3 is negative, and anything below negative 1 you should have gotten is a positive. Now, we want where it is less than 0, so we want between negative 1 and 3, and we want greater than 7. So therefore, and because it doesn't have the equal to part, I'm only going to use parentheses, I'm going to say it is between negative 1 and 3, and then from a 7 to positive infinity. All right, let's take a look at another uh, example. Okay, on this one, um, pay attention to the fact that we have squares and cubes. I'm going to talk about a multiplicity rule uh, tomorrow. I'm just, uh, I just want you to get used to this number line idea first, and then I'll, I'll give you a kind of a little bit of a shortcut. All right, but to start, hopefully you see x is equal to negative 2, you see x is equal to 3, you see x is equal to negative 8. So you've got your negative 8, you've got your negative 2, and you've got your 3. From here, as we've been doing, you want to make sure that you are uh, testing points. So any number that is greater than 3 is going to end up giving us a positive result. Anything between negative 2 and 3 is a negative result. Anything between negative 8 and negative 2 is going to give me a negative result. And then anything between... Uh, um, you know, negative infinity and negative 8 is going to give me a positive result. If you need to, you know, like I said, test points. Choose any points that you want, and you'll see that this uh, works out. 
Okay, and so now when I go to uh, state my uh, solution, I want greater than or equal to zero, I want where it is positive. Since it has the equal to, I'm gonna use brackets and I'm gonna say that it is from negative infinity up to negative eight. And then it is from a three to infinity. Okay. All right. Uh, two things to watch out for. Number one, okay, on this one. If I were to um, think about, like, say, uh, trying to factor this or solve it or even graph it, I want you to see something if I graph it. Okay, if I graph this on an xy axis, what's going to happen is it is not going to cross the x axis at all. Okay, all right, well, one of the things that we said is that we wanted to, you know, uh, find our x-intercepts and we wanted to find out where across the x-axis because that determines our key points and our key points help us create our interval. Well, since it doesn't cross at all, therefore any x value that we use is going to work. It's going to give us a value that is greater than or equal to zero or above the x-axis. So how do we write a situation where all numbers work? Well, we just keep it simple. We just say it goes from negative infinity all the way to infinity. All right, and then on this last example here, okay, um, if I were to say I want uh, less than or equal to zero, okay, on this one, notice I only have one solution, x is equal to three. So if I went with my number line idea, I only have three, and now I have to test numbers below it and above three. Well, I like to always choose zero because it's a very easy one to work. Okay, and so if I plug in zero here, I get negative three, and if I plug in zero here, I also get negative three, and negative three times negative three is a positive nine, and a positive nine is not less than or equal to zero. And if I plug numbers uh, like, let's say a five, well, five minus three is a two, and five minus three over here is also a two, two times two is four, which is also positive, which is, uh, you know, not less than or equal to zero. But if I plug in 3 itself, well, 3 minus 3 would give me 0, 3 minus 3 would give me 0, and 0 times 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, the only time that our polynomial is going to be less than or equal to 0 is when it is 3. So we can just say that it is at 3, okay? Um, and that's the only time that it is going to work. All right, so... Uh, if you um, have questions on the factoring, if you have questions on the um, determining the positive negatives, come with those questions to class and we can work on them uh, tomorrow.